Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are enjoying your snow day. Um, this is a video that that will cover chapter three of Groundwork for Better Vocabulary. Um, we will still have a quiz over this chapter on uh, on Thursday, so make sure that you review this this video. Um, but also, in addition to that, make sure that you do the online exercises and that you take the time to um, review things um, and study before the quiz that you have. Okay, so, start, okay. so starting off, we have here uh, Chapter 3, and we have all of the words here. Normally in class, what we'll do is, is we'll divide these up into nouns, verbs, and adjectives. I recommend that you do that. Um, uh, if you have the time, because it's always good to work with the words. Um, most um, most studies say that it takes about between 10 and 20 um, encounters with a new vocabulary word for you to really understand it. So for the more times that you can use the word um, or play with the word, the more likely you are going to remember it. So let's move on uh, to the uh, to each of the definitions. All right. So our first word here is accompany, um, and accompany is a verb. One thing I want to point out here is this y at the end. We're learning about vowel sounds, and we know that a y at the end of a multisyllable word is often a long e, and you can see here that that is true. So we have. The Myers asked my sister to accompany them to the seashore to help take care of their younger, their young children. And then you have, in popular music, words usually accompany the tune. In much classical music, there are no words to go along with the notes. So what accompany means is it means to go with. Now the way that I remember this one is if we look inside the word accompany, you see the word company, right? Now, company can obviously mean a business like McDonald's or Starbucks or something like that. But company also means um, the people who you are with. Um, so you could say, you know, we are having company over for dinner, meaning that we're having people uh, are coming over to our house for dinner. So what a company means, means to go with, to go with someone. Um, and it's a verb. And in this case, it's an action verb. So our second word here is desperate. Um, I want to, you to focus here on this A-T-E. We talked earlier about there's two pronunciations of this. There's eight and there's it. And we said that when something is a verb, it's going to have the long A sound. And when something is an adjective or a, a noun, it's going to have the short I sound and be like it. And you can see here it's the short I sound, and so it's an adjective. So extremely ill people may be so desperate for a cure that they will try anything. The earthquake victims are desperate for food and clothing. So what desperate means is in great need of, okay? Means that you really need it. Now the way that I remember this word, and this may or may not help you, is that this part of the word sounds to me like another word that is despair. Now these two words aren't related, but they do sound similar. And despair means great sadness, great sadness. So when you are desperate for something, it means that you need something so bad that without it, you're going to be very, very sad. It could be that without it, you're going to die. Um, or w without it, you're going to be very, uh, very hurt. Okay, But desperate means that you have a, a great, great need for it. Not just that you want it, but that you need it or else something bad will happen to you. One thing I want you to, to pay attention to is look at the preposition that is coming after desperate. Okay, We see that it's for. Now, like I said, it's not uh, with other ones. It's never 100% that it'll always be with four, but uh, it's a good clue for you both in your writing and also when you're taking uh, when you're taking the quiz. Okay. 
All right, so our next one here is determine. Um, and determine is a verb. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is, is the sound of this I. Now, the rule that we just learned about the silent E is that this I should be a long I. But guess what? It's not. Like I said, in English, there's rules and then there's exceptions to the rules. I don't know exactly the reason why this one isn't determined, but it is. So there you go. Um, the doctor looked at the x-ray and determined that Chen's ankle was sprained, not broken. Using a calculator, I determined that the super giant box of laundry soap was a better buy than the family economy box. Okay, um, So determine means to discover. Okay? And determine means to discover, but it doesn't mean discover in the same way of when you're searching for something. But it, it means, determine means to discover in the way where you look at some information and then you make a decision based on that information. So if we look at these two ex sentences, here the doctor is looking at the x-ray, and from the x-ray, he determined that the ankle was sprained, not broken. Sprained is just when you, you know, when you twist your ankle and it's, and it hurts really bad, but it's, n it's not broken. The bone hasn't been broken, but it will swell up. Um, in this case, the person is using the calculator, and using the calculator, they determined or they figured out that the really big box of laundry soap was a better buy or was cheaper than the family economy box, okay? So determine does mean to discover, but it means that you're, you're using some information that you have to make a decision, okay? So for example, when I went to college, I looked before I picked my, my college, I looked at a, little, uh, a lot of different colleges, and I determined that I would go to the University of Iowa um, after looking at all of the different information. The other thing I want you guys to pay attention to is this here, that. You can see that there's a that after each one of these. So um, that's, that's another clue. Not always going to be 100%, but it's one clue to help you. Okay. So our next word here is dispose, and dispose is a verb. So the sign says, lungs at work, please dispose of all cigarettes, cigars, and pipes before entering. After losing 40 pounds, um, Herb decided to dispose of all the clothes that reminded him of his old size. He never wanted to see them again. And we have this sign down here, think tidy, dispose of cigarette butts properly. So dispose means to get rid of, okay? So dispose um, means to throw away something. Um, it can be something physical, like in this case, cigarette, cigar, and pipes. Uh, it can be um, something, something else physical, like clothes, you know? Um, but you could also dispose of bad habits, you know, of something that you don't like, um, that you do a habit that you have, like, I don't know, like picking your nose or something like that. You, you try to dispose of that, that habit. Um, one of the things, though, I want you to pay attention to here is that we see dispose is followed by of. Okay? Um, and, and remember, when you dispose of something, especially if you're disposing of a, a bad habit, um, you can only dispose of your own <laughs> bad habits. You can't dispose of somebody else's um, bad habits. Okay? All right. So our next word here is evident. Evident. Okay? And it is an adjective. So the fact that my aunt dyes her hairs is evident. Her gray roots show. So gray roots, what this is talking about is, is when you color your hair, when you dye your hair, as your hair grows back, the roots are, is the part that's closest to your head, and that contains the original color of your hair. Um, so to make it evident that she didn't want to go, go out with James again, Crystal sent back all his gifts 
and letters, or letters and gifts. So evident, evident means easy to see. Another word we could we could use of is um, obvious. All right, it's something that that is not hidden. Evident is related to the word evidence. If you think about that with crimes, they talk about evidence. With the, this is the thing, this is the information that is showing that someone has has committed a crime. Is the evidence, um, but evident means that it is um, obvious or easy to see. Okay. All right. So moving on, our next word is improper. An improper is an adjective. So a bathing suit is fine for the beach, but it's improper for church. Movies are rated PG-13 if they contain material that is considered improper for young children. So improper means wrong. Okay? So if we look at this word, th there's two parts to this word. There's the im and there's proper. And what im means, it means not, okay? So improper just means not proper. And proper means correct. Now, improper, if you look here, improper is followed by the, the preposition for in both of these cases. Because something that is improper for one thing may be proper for something else. So in this example, a bathing suit is fine for the beach, or a bathing suit is proper for the beach, but it's improper for church. Okay, So it's the same piece of clothing, but it's, it's correct for one place, and it's wrong for another place. Okay, So improper means that it's, it's not correct for something. Okay? Uh, we we want to look here that there's this four, right? It's often going to be there, but not always. It's never going to be 100%. Okay? Moving on to the next one. This is preserve. Okay? Preserve is uh, a verb. And w w notice that this is a short I sound, not preserve. Okay? Um, the, the prefix pre... Um, means before, but pra doesn't mean anything about before, so it's preserve. Uh, steps are being taken to preserve the remaining giant redwood trees of California and Oregon for future generations. To preserve its valuable old fabrics, the museum keeps them away from bright lights and extreme temperatures. So preserve means to keep safe. And preserve, preserve is also a, a word that is used with, um, with foods. You may have heard the word preservative. So a lot of foods, um, junk foods, have chemicals in them that preserve them, that keep them from, from uh, going bad. So, um, for example, um, a, a lot of bread that you buy in the store that's in a bag has preservatives, and it will last and stay fresh for a long time. If you compare that to, you know, bread that maybe you make at home, that bread will not last as long. Maybe after one or two days, it will get all hard um, and won't taste very good because it doesn't have these preservatives that keep something fresh or keep them safe. Um, in this one, we're trying to pre preserve these giant redwood trees, these special kinds of trees. We're trying to save them from being destroyed. In this case, we're trying to save the old fabrics. The fabrics are the cloth, right? Um, uh, the, they're, they're trying to keep them from, from, um, from getting bad or, or going away. Uh, so preserve. All right. Um, so then here we have the word um, pursue. Pursue. Okay. Um, and here we have the long, this long O sound that we didn't really talk about. Um, and we have an R controlled U. Uh, but preserve, uh, pursue is a verb. 
Um, after raising her children, my sister returned to college to pursue a degree in art education. She then taught art in an elementary school. Victor plans to pursue an acting career in New York City. His goal is to become a great actor, not a great star. So pursue means to work towards. Now another way, uh, an, another way of, of thinking of pursue is also means to chase or to go after. And it, it, it's related if it's not the, exactly the same. But in this case here, we're pursuing a degree in art education. This means this is something that you're working for. In this case, the person is pursuing an acting career. This is what the person wants to have. So pursue means it's when you pursue something, it means it's something that you want to have but you don't have now. And it's something that is going to take you work in order to get. So all of you right now are pursuing an education, right? You are working towards getting more of an education, right? You're pursuing um, better English. Um, a lot of you, once you finish ESL, are going to pursue um, a degree um, from, from an American uni university, okay? But pursue means you're working towards some goal, you're trying to get something, and that is the thing that you are pursuing. All right, um, so here we have the word rejection. And if we look at the end of it, it ends in T-I-O-N, and that always means something's a noun. So whenever you see T-I-O-N, you'll know it's a noun. From the last chapter, we had the word frustration. Okay, same thing. This T-I-O-N or S-I-O-N or just I-O-N always means a noun. My brother was upset when he received a letter of rejection from a college he wanted to attend. Uh, Nita was too disturbed when she didn't get the job she had interviewed for. If you can't handle rejection, you have some growing up to do, she said. So rejection means not being accepted. So if we look at this word rejection, we can see that it, it's related to the word reject, right? And reject means that you're saying no, you're not accepting something. So rejection is the noun form of that, means that you haven't been accepted. So in this case, you know, when you apply for college, you might get a letter of rejection. Or when you apply for a job, you get a letter of rejection. What does that mean? It means that they said no, <laughs> right? You don't want to go. Uh, they don't want you to come. Uh, I applied for um, George Mason University for a PhD program, and I got a letter of rejection from them, so I wasn't happy about that. Um, uh, but here it's saying you have to learn how to handle rejection um, as an adult because people are going to say no to you. Um, all the time. You may want something, uh, but you're not always going to get what you want. Um, so that's what rejection is. All right, here we are, finally here after 18 minutes. <laughs> um, uh, so we have here the word uh, restore, okay? Uh, and r restore is, is a verb, okay? Uh, during the 1980s, the Statue of Liberty was restored. The damaged torch and the 1600 iron bands that hold the copper skin to the frame were replaced. Surprisingly, there have been cases where a bump on the head has restored the sight of a blind person. A bump means, you know, someone gets hit on the head and then they got, the, they got their sight back. Uh, the blind person couldn't see before, but then after they get hit on the head, they can see. So in this one, we see the chair on the right has been restored. So this is the old one, and this is the new one. So restore means to fix, okay? But restore means, means to fix to how it originally was. The word re, this word part re, <coughs> um, means uh, to go back, uh, um, or again. Actually, it means again. So when you restore something, you fix it, meaning that you make it look like it did at the beginning. 
So this, this chair is obviously very old, but in the past it used to look like this. So to restore it, you go from this back to the original, the original um, situation. Okay. Um, in this one, we're talking about the Statue of Liberty. If it's restored, it means it's repaired so that it's like it was at the beginning. Okay. Um, so what I recommend that you guys do is is review the online. Uh, activities at Townsend Press. You can do the uh, word definitions and the, I think it's the, the matching, whatever, the first two um, activities. You can repeat those ones again and again. Um, uh, I also recommend that you do sentence check one and sentence check two in the book because that is what the test will look like. Um, we can review the answers to both of those before we take the quiz. Okay, um, but do take some time to review this and also take a, a look at the um, the other video for chapter um, for chapter four.